Hey everybody, uh, this is Mr. MathBlog. This lesson is applying integer operations. So we're going to do more, um, uh, more than one step on this, and it's mostly division with addition or subtraction on this. So we got to use order of operation. Okay, there's our common core strand for our most grooviest teachers, and then our question is here is, um, how do we use integer operations to solve real-world problems? Oh my. Okay, so using order of operations with or integers. Okay, the order of operations applies to integer operations as well as positive number operations. So perform multiplication and division first and then we do addition and subtraction after we do multiplication and division and we always work from the left and go to the right. That's how we do order of operations. So here's an example. Hannah made four withdrawals of $20 from her checking account. So that means minus 20 four times. She also wrote a check for $215. So by how much did the amount in her checking account change? Okay, so let's analyze this. So, so we need to find the total change in Hannah's account. And since withdrawals and writing a check represents decrease in her account, uh, how much money she has in her account, we're going to use negative numbers to represent these amounts. Okay, so let's uh, get a plan together. So write uh, a product to represent the four withdrawals. Okay, so four withdrawals of 20 would be 4 times negative 20, okay? And then we're going to go ahead and add the negative 215 from when she wrote the check to represent um, uh, that expression right there, 4 times negative 20 plus 215, okay? Let's go ahead and solve that, okay? So order of operation says we have to multiply this first. So positive 4 times negative 20. Well, 4 times 2 is negative or is 8, but times negative 2 is negative 8, and add the 0, so this is going to be negative 80 right there, okay? So, and then now what we're going to do is, is go ahead and um, negative 80 uh, minus 215 is the same as negative 80 plus a negative 215. So just add those together, you guys, and it's going to be a negative, a negative 295 when we do that, okay? Now, what's two, negative 295 represent? Well, it represents the amount in the account was decreased uh, by 295 dollars okay always answer it in the context of the of the question okay try to always do that okay so to justify and evaluate the value of negative 295 represents a decrease whoops I misspelled something dang thought I caught everything a decrease of two hundred ninety five dollars and that makes sense since uh, withdrawals and writing a check removes money from the account right there, okay? All right, so here's another one here. Reggie lost three spaceships in level three of a video game. He lost 30 points for each spaceship, okay? So um, uh, when he completed level three, he earned a bonus of 200 points. By how much did his score change, okay? So he lost three spaceships in level three and lost 30 points for each spaceship. So that's going to be 3 times negative 30 right there. And then, then he got the 200 bonus right there. So 3 times 3 is 9, but times negative 3 is negative 9. So add the 0 is negative 90. Negative 90 plus 200, subtract those and you get 110. So so how much? So Reggie earned 110 points in that uh, level 3 video game. All right. So this guy right here, we got a, a first multiply, negative 6 times positive 13. Oh, I didn't show the shortcut on that. Gosh darn it. Okay, so um, uh, negative 6 times 10 is negative 60, and so think of that as 10 plus 3. Negative 6 times 3 is, um, is uh, negative 18, so negative 60 plus negative 18 is negative 78. Okay, uh, if you watched the last lesson, I, was, I replaced uh, 13 with uh, 10 plus 3. Anyways, and then, uh, so now we're going to add those numbers together and keep it negative, so it's a negative 99 right there, okay? And there's, there's no context to that. It just says simplify, so that's the answer. All right, so using negative integers to represent quotients, okay? We can use positive and negative integers to solve problems involving amounts uh, that increase or decrease. Sometimes we may need to use more than one operation. You'll see that here. So three brothers have their own savings account. They borrow $72 from their parents for concert tickets. Each brother must pay an equal share of this amount. Also, the youngest brother already owes his parents $15. So by how much will the youngest brother's savings change after he pays his parents back of all the money? So, so he owes, uh, starting off with, he already owes $15. 
and then it's going to be the $72 taken divided by the three brothers right there. So 72 divided by, by um, 3. So since it's decreasing, then we're going to do use negative. So it's going to be um, uh, negative 72 because they, they, they owe that money, and then the negative 15 that the youngest already owes. Okay, since there's an equal share, $72 will be paid back. We're going to use division to determine three equal parts of negative 72 and then uh, take away another 15 on these equal parts, okay? So the change to, uh, of the youngest brother's account is going to be negative 72 uh, divided by 3, and then we're going to go ahead and tag on the extra $15, okay? All right, so we're going to evaluate that expression. Let me slide that up right there, okay? Now, um, if you don't know how to do, if you don't have a calculator, you can break up 72 into numbers that you know are divisible by 3, like 60 and 12, and 60 plus 12 equals 72. So I'm going to break negative 72 into negative 60 plus negative 12, and then I can go ahead and distribute this uh, divided by 3 through. So negative 60 divided by 3 is negative 20. Negative 12 divided by 3 is negative 4. So negative 20 plus uh, negative 4 is going to get me negative 24. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and add that negative 15, so it's negative 39, and then this was a word problem, so answer this. This is how much money uh, the youngest brother's uh, savings account will decrease. It'll decrease by 39 bucks, okay? Hey, suppose there were four brothers instead of three. How much would the youngest brother still need to pay? Well, if it's the $15 stays the same, then all we got to do is change 72 and divide it by 4. So negative 72 divided by 4 plus 15. Now 4 goes into these same numbers, you guys. Let me get this uh, uh, little cursor right here. 4 goes into 60 15 times. 4 goes into that 3 times. So it's going to be negative 15 plus negative 3 right there. So I'm going to do that right there, and that gets me negative 18, okay? So negative 18 plus negative 15 is negative 33, so he'll need to pay, need to pay uh, 33 bucks instead of the 39 bucks if there was four brothers in there. All right, okay, so let's go ahead and simplify these, okay? So um, let's go ahead and we're going to go ahead and do the divisions first, okay? So, so negative 12 divided by uh, positive 6 is negative 2, so I get negative 2 plus 2 is 0, okay? And then um, uh, let's see, what did I do on this? I did 60 and 27 for this right here, so I did... Um, negative 87 is negative 60 plus negative 27, and I divided that 3 through, okay? So negative 60 divided by negative 3 is positive 20 because it's a negative divided by a negative. And then negative 27 divided by negative 3 is positive 9. So we're going to get 20 plus 9 and then minus 9 right there, okay? All right, and then so we get 29 minus 9, which is 20. Okay, over here, uh, see that's a nice little trick right there, you guys. Okay, um, uh, 40 divided by negative 5 is negative 8. Negative 8 plus 30, okay, and that gets me negative 22. All right, so uh, let's see, I did negative 39 is negative 30 plus negative 9 because both of those are divisible by 3. Okay, so then um, uh, negative 30 divided by 3 is negative 10. Negative 9 divided by 3 is negative 3, so negative 10 plus negative 3 is negative 13. So this is negative 13 minus 15, okay? Negative 13 minus 15 is going to get me negative 28. So you add them and you take the negatives right there, okay? Pretty slick, huh? All right, so that's what they're teaching now with that common core. A lot of people don't like that common core, but I think it's once you... Once you get over that uh, that fear of it, um, it's actually it's actually kind of cool. It shows you mu uh, lots of different ways to do the same stuff. Okay, hello, little sweetie. I got little Lucy in my lap now. So, uh, where is it? Where is it? Go find it. Where's the ball? Go get it. Okay, where is it? Go find it. Go get it. All right, sorry guys. So, uh, Jill and Tony played a board game in which they you're gonna hear a squeaky happening here soon. Well, maybe you won't. Uh, Jill and Tony played a board game in which uh, they moved counters along the board. Jill moved her counter back three spaces four times, so four times negative three, and then moves her counter forward six spaces, so it's going to be plus six. Okay, Tony moves his counter back two spaces three times, so three times negative two, and then moves his counter forward three spaces one time, so plus three. Find the player's overall change. Who moved further, okay? So here's Jill, you guys. So find the player's overall uh, change in position. So Jill is 
4 times negative 3 plus 6. So 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. Negative 12 plus 6 is negative 6. So her overall change is 6 spaces back. Okay, and then Tony is uh, 3 times negative 2 plus 3. Whoops, I got an extra parenthesis there. Pretend like that's not there. Okay, that shouldn't be there. All right, so then we'll do this first. Negative 3 times, or 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. Negative 6 plus 3 is going to be negative 3. Okay, so find each player's overall uh, change in position. So Jill moved back 6 spaces. Tony moved back 3 spaces. Who moved back farther? Uh, let's see. So now compare the number of spaces moved by the players. So negative 6 is greater than negative 3. So Jill moved further back than, than Tony did. Okay, so uh, why do we compare those absolute values right here? Okay, so so how come we compare these absolute values, negative 6 and negative 3? Well, it's talking about spaces that we went back, so we're comparing the number of spaces. So that's a, anything with distance or like that di spaces is distance, that's always a, a positive number right there. All right, another one. Okay, so um, uh, Amber and Will are in line together to buy tickets. Amber moves back three places three times to talk with friends so that's going to be three times negative three okay it's going to be it's going to be this three times this negative three right there okay and then she's going to be and then she's invited to move five spaces up so plus five will moves back four places twice so this is going to be two times negative four and then he goes up three places so plus three overall who moved farther back in line okay all right so here's amber right there so so we did um, uh, three times negative three is negative nine negative nine plus five is negative four okay let's do will so will is going to be two times negative four okay and then negative two times negative four is negative eight negative eight plus three is negative five who moved further back will did okay he moved back five spaces and amber only moved back four spaces overall. All right, so this says evaluate each expression. So number nine has two expressions and number 10 has two expressions until which, until after you find out those uh, um, values, find out which one has the greatest value. Now remember, negatives work backwards when you're talking about greater than or less than stuff. Do you hear squeaky in the background? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> all right, so let's uh, evaluate all these expressions here, okay? So I'm going to first do the divisions first. So negative divided by a positive, this is going to be negative 5. Negative 5 minus 2. Negative 5 minus 2 is like adding those is 7, so negative 7. All right, and then here we're going to go uh, negative 28 divided by positive 4 is negative 7. And negative 7 plus 1, okay? So negative 7 plus 1 is negative 6. Now, which one is greater? Okay, think of a number line. Which one is further to the left is the smaller number. Negative 7 is further to the left on a number line than negative 6. So this one's bigger. Okay, I'd rather have, uh, I'd rather owe $6 than owe $7. Okay, so uh, you're in better position with money. So that one's the greater value. Remember, negatives work kind of backwards when you're talking about greater than and less than stuff. Okay, here we go. I'm almost done, you guys. So positive 42 divided by negative 3. Okay, so positive 42 divided by negative 3. I think I did 30 and 12, I think. No, I didn't. I didn't even do that. Okay, anyway, so um, 42, that's not right. Let's see. Um, where am I getting 6 from? That must be an 18. What did I do wrong? Let's see what I did wrong there. So I got negative 5. Yeah, that's not right. Uh, 42 divided by 3 is negative 14. Sorry, you guys. So sorry about my mistakes. I'm sure you guys make mistakes all the time. Actually, mistakes are a good thing. I tell my students all the time, you learn a lot when you're making mistakes because um, chances are you won't make those mistakes again. Anyway, so 42 divided by negative 3 is negative 14 right there. All right, so let me, um, let me grab that thing right there. Okay. Uh, and then let's go uh, negative 36 divided by 9 uh, is negative 4. Negative 4 minus 2 is um, uh, negative 6. Okay, and then which one is greater there, you guys? Okay, remember they work backwards. Okay, I know 6 is greater than 5, so that means negative 5 is going to be greater than negative 6 right there. So that one's the greater value right there. All right, you guys, uh, um, uh, I hope that uh, le uh, lesson makes sense. And again, you guys, mistakes are, are actually a good thing. So don't get bogged down by making mistakes, you guys. Um, you always do a lot better, uh, but you just won't make that mistake again. All right, you guys, take care.